Hey everyone. So I'm going to talk to you about linguistics and I know nothing about linguistics, but maybe there's a hidden message in this talk. Or maybe there are two hidden messages. One is if you pick a topic that Matthias likes, he will automatically accept you at his conferences. And the other one is even if you don't know much about something, you might still know something that other people find interesting, especially at a conference like this. So I'm going to set a timer on my Miro board so you can actually measure how little I know about linguistics. And then you can decide if you want to listen to me on this topic or not. So the timer started. Here we go. So in domain driven design, we talk about linguistics a lot. I think there's a few people at this conference who even have domain linguist in their Twitter bio. And we talk about things like bounded context, we, we look for where some concept or entity changes its name, like where a lead becomes a customer, or where a word can have different meanings in different places, like the word ticket. Every domain driven design book contains an example saying, customer support ticket versus a ticket for booking a seat at the movies or something very similar to indicate linguistic boundaries or bounded context. But that's not very much linguistics, really, is it? Is there, is there more to this topic that we can borrow and learn from? So by chance, I recently came across um, something called a semantic domain. And I was reading this semantic domain description. And I'm like, this sounds really familiar. A semantic domain is a specific place that's, uh, that shares a set of meanings or a language that hold its meaning within the given context. What does that sound like? Can't quite put my finger on it, but this led me onto the concept of lexical relations. So when we're talking about groups of words that share meaning and belong together, how, why, what's the mechanics? These, these words can be related in different ways and that can explain why in a specific context, they have a specific meaning and relationships to each other. And the other important thing is when the words have a relationship, that's indicating not just something about the words, but the concepts those words represent also have some relationship. There's some domain concepts there. So let's quickly blast through these in the one minute and 55 seconds I have available. So co-locates are one kind of lexical relationship words used frequently together like bird and fly. So when we're modeling domains, this is an important concept, right? Which words are used together? That could be indicating we've got a semantic domain. We've also got, and I, I have no idea how to pronounce these words, but I'm gonna try anyway. And if anyone wants to make jokes about my pronunciations on Twitter, you're welcome. So synonymy, synonymy is where words are similar, they share similarities, different words, similar meanings, like big and large can almost mean the same thing. We've then got the opposite, antonymy, where two words have like an opposite meaning or a large contrast, kind and unkind. Uh, and these are called paradigm forms, by the way. I found four of them, but I think there are more. We also have hyponymy or hyponymy or whatever you call it, where there's an implied relationship between the words, like uh, chicken is a specific kind of bird. So when you say chicken, you're implying that bird, something about birds too. Uh, then we have polysemy, which is the example I talked about earlier, ticket, where this word can have multiple meanings. Three other ones I quickly want to talk about. So here we have this nice diagram I borrowed from Wikipedia, which talks about words that have some similarity, same pronunciation, but different meaning, same spelling, but different meaning or different sound, same meaning, but different word. So that's quite an interesting one to think about. And then a couple down here, I have no idea how to pronounce these either. I think this one is interesting, synecdoge. It's where you, you use the name of a part to describe the whole. So example here is I bought some new wheels. Well, what you mean is you bought a car, but you're referring to the whole car just by its wheels. And then the other one is metonymy or metonymy or however you pronounce it, I have no idea. It's where you describe something by something that's related to it. So when you call business people suits because they're associated with suits, 
even though you're talking about the people wearing the suits, not the actual suits. And finally, etymology is interesting, how words evolve and change over time, especially within a given context. So the example I've got is shipping. In the 1590s, shipping meant actually sending stuff to you on a ship. Now it just means getting stuff from A to B. You, you can get some shipping when you purchase stuff online. So that's everything I know about linguistics in four minutes. Thank you and enjoy this conference.